Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're going to go over how to code our binary pixel app. In the previous video, we actually designed. This is our front page, it's our binary pixels and conversion page where we can convert from binary to decimal. We also convert from decimal to binary. And you have this little pixel display here that you can click on and make little emojis. So let's go ahead and get started. On the home page, this should be fairly simple. You have two buttons here. We need to link these two buttons to our screen here. We've done this before. You could also, we have some background music and text-to-speech. Use your creativity and use text-to-speech. I'll show you how to do the background music. Also think about the things that you've learned this year and the different coding and skills that you've done previously and use your creativity to add here. I'm just gonna simply do the background music. I will also uh, just read this out and then do these two buttons. So let's come here. I'm gonna go to screen. I'm gonna pull in my initialize. So whenever the screen starts, I am going to start my background music. And what else do I wanna do? Whenever the screen starts, let's speak as well. So I'll just go to text-to-speech, put that there. And I wanna read, interact with binary numbers. So that's this label, label interact binary. And I just wanna get this text property. Well, remember, all of these are green blocks inside of your blocks. So let's go to blocks, label, interact binary. You can see all of these font size, height. All of these are just your properties. I wanna get what the current text size. And this text is this text. So it's gonna say interact with binary, which is what I want it to say when the screen launches. I wanna link these two to our other screen. We've done that before as well. I'm gonna click on button pixels. I'm gonna pull that out. Button binary conversion, I'm gonna pull that out. Come up here to control, scroll down. I'm gonna pull in my open screen name, fill it in with a text, and make sure that you copy it exact. So I have binary numbers with an S pixels. So binary numbers. And I'm gonna leave off the S so you can see what happens. So now when I have binary number pixels, and if you look up here, binary numbers with an S pixels. If I click on this, which is button pixels, I'm gonna get an error message. Invalid screen, binary number pixels. What does that mean? That means this screen doesn't exist. And if you look at it, this screen doesn't exist. I only have two screens, screen one and binary numbers with an S. So make sure when you're typing in screen names, you exactly match what you put here. So if I put an S, and I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And let's add in some text-to-speech as well. And I'll say time to draw with pixels and binary for that. And I'll add another text-to-speech at the bottom. And let's just say something like, let's convert binary and decimal numbers. All right, so now that I have the S there, this, when I click on this, it should take me to my other screen. And what else do I wanna do? Well, I probably wanna stop the music. So I'm gonna click on play, pull this in and stop, and pull this in and stop. Now I could, remember do not repeat yourself. You see I have text-to-speech, I'm saying something, I stop the music and then I go to another that same screen, I have text-to-speech, so I can actually make a procedure from this. I'm gonna go to procedures, pull out a procedure block, 
just call it go to pixels and conversion. I'll pull this in here. Now, these have two different text messages that they're saying. So I'm just going to add an input here. And I'm going to say message to say. So when I have that input, I'm going to go back to procedures, pull in that. And I'm just going to put this message to say there. So this is going to come over here. And then I'll put this in there. Same thing down here. Now I can actually come back here, go to pixels conversion, and message to say is this, and I can get rid of that. So there we made a quick and easy procedure. Instead of having six blocks, I had three blocks up here and three blocks up here. I only have three now. I'm not repeating myself. And again, in your create for in your create performance task exam for the AP computer science principles, you will have to make procedures. And so you should be pretty comfortable with doing those at this point. All right, so let's actually test this. If I click on draw. Time to draw with pixels and binary. So you can see it says time to draw with pixels and binary. Um, this is what our screen looks like right now. I cannot scroll. So everything fits on the screen. So one thing that I don't like, it says hint for text box one. Well, that is, if I look over here, this right here. And if you look here, the hint says hint for text box one. So let's change that to say, boop, 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 boop. enter a number. So there you go. But also, for this, I want to make sure that it's numbers only, so I'm going to select this right here, numbers only. So that way, when I click on this, right, I only see numbers. If I take this off, let's hide this, I, I click on this, you see now I see letters, and I can go to numbers, but I'm still seeing all this extra stuff. If I had this again, right here for this text box, I know I only want numbers. I'm going to select numbers only. Let's check these guys as well. So here you can see in the previous video, I did that for these guys. These are only ones or zeros. And then we convert it to binary. One thing I don't like, I want to add, I want to put this at the bottom and give my numbers a little bit more space. So. Let's just quickly, I'm gonna pull down a horizontal arrangement there. I'm gonna put my decimal in there. I'm gonna put my results in there as well. That way I have the full binary, all the blocks are binary, and then this is kind of my result. I will, this is up high, you can see that question mark. I'm coming here, and I wanna make my line vertical to center so now you can see it's kind of centered and I think that's good and I always just take default off and make none all right so we are here let's just check the other button and we'll go back to screen one so you can see this is working it said interact with binary numbers it started my background music. It's slow again because we're using the emulator, but if you test it on the phone or tablet, it will work. Ah, one thing I don't like, if you look here, we have a space here, we don't have a space here. Obviously, my little trick is to add a label in the middle. I call it spacer. Binary you can see every time I'm refreshing this, it's starting over. So I want to do stop and then start. So I'm going to come up here, player background music, and pull in stop. So I have that. 
And let's say two pixels. So it stops now. So no matter how many times before it was playing and then playing and playing. So I had three versions of it playing. Now it's always going to stop. All right, we tested this one. I like my little space in between. Let's check this one because we coded that as well. It should work because this is calling that same procedure. That's another benefit of doing do not repeat yourself. If you know this one is working, I should assume this one is working. The only difference is this one is going to say something different. Let's try. Let's convert binary and decimal numbers. And there we go. So now we have this. And let's do the easy stuff first. Let's go from the top down. So what we want to do is when somebody clicks this, we want to make sure and these, let's just go back over it. These are all buttons. You can see them here. The reason we didn't rename them is in this instance, we don't really care about um, individual buttons. They're all just buttons. And when we click this button versus this button, any button we click, we want to make sure that it turns either black or white. Um, if you have a bunch of buttons and you're doing unique things, you want to make sure you rename this like we always are renaming different stuff like image home or image pixels. Otherwise, when you come here to code, you do not know what button 11 is versus button 12. In our instance, again, we don't need it. We're just going to deal with buttons in general. So let's get this to work. Not a lot of code to get it working because we're dealing with general buttons. You would think we might go and click on each one of these buttons and pull something out when it's clicked, but that means we would have to pull out 48 different buttons. We're not going to do that. We're going to just minimize that. If you go to the bottom, they have this any component. So I'm going to expand that and you can see all the components you add to your App Inventor app will show up here. So I have any button any horizontal arrangement, any image, any label, any table, or any text box. That's because I've added those components to my app. Well, I want any button. So I'm going to click on any button, and it has all of the same blocks that these have. Button clicked, got focus, long click, lost focus, touch down, touch up. If I go back up, if you look at my buttons, they have these exact same things. They have the same properties. So I want when any button is clicked. So that means if this button is clicked, or this button is clicked, or this button is clicked, any of these buttons, if it is clicked. So, Let's see what we're going to do. Go ahead and add in my comments. And really, I have three choices here. It's going to be update the button background color. My first choice, if it's if the buttons, I'm just going to say BG for background, color is black or white. So if it's black, turn it. If let's put, keep going. If both in background, color is black, make white. And I'll expand this a little bit out. B, if button BG color is white, turn black. Now number two, so again, if this is white, I want to turn it black when I click on it. But we have two other buttons here. So, Do I have to code these? Well, let's see what happens. 
these are yellow. So if I say if it's white or black, then I can kind of control that. But because this is saying anytime a button is clicked, these are buttons. If I don't specify that if it's it has to be either black or white, it would update these two buttons as well. So let's go ahead and look at how this looks. What I need to do an if statement. This is this is other, which is my to decimal button, which is my BTN to decimal and my BTN to binary. So I'm going to have to do an if statement. I can see it here if background color is black or white. So I'm going to come up to control, pull in my if statement. And now I want to get the background color of any button. So if I want to do that, I have to go back down to any component. I'm going to click on any button. And I want to get the background color. So I'm going to say if the background color and I need to compare it with something I can't like you can see this doesn't fit in there so I'm just gonna go to logic and pull in an equal sign and we say if the background color of the component well what component how do I know if it's this one or that one or this one remember we used any button is clicked so when you use this the button that you're clicking is actually here called component. So I'm going to mouse over this and pull component in here. If the background color of the component, which is a button I'm clicking, is equal to what? I said black or white. So we're going to come here to colors, black. So if it's equal to black, I can do something here. If it's equal to white, I can do something different. So oh, this is actually what we're going to do again, and I could just do an else if, and I would do the same thing, go to logic, pull in a comparison, come down to any component, click on button, I want to get the background color of the button component that I've clicked if it's equal to white. So I'm going to go back up, click on color, pull in white. So now, if the color is black, I want to make it white. You can see up here, our kind of our, our emoji builder pixel guy. If the color is white, we want to make it black. So what I'm going to do is go back to any component, any button. I want to set the background color now of the component. I'm going to mouse over the component. And I'm going to set it to white. Come to colors. I could just duplicate this block, but so you see the process again, I'm clicking on any button. I'm going to come down here. And any, I'm going to get the component I clicked on. And I'm going to change the color. I'm going to come back up to colors. I could have just duplicated that. I'm going to click on colors and pull in black. This is pretty much one. If the button background color is black, that's what this says. If the button's background color equals black, make it white. So set the background color to white. If the button background color is white, turn it black. So if the background color is white of the button, turn that button's background color to black. That's what you really need. Let's see it working. So let's say I wanted to make this guy as here and here and here. So you see I have a little smiley face there. So this one is working. These were white. When I clicked it, they turned black. So let's see if this one is working. If I click this, you can see that is also working. So there you go. What about if I click these? Nothing happens. Well, why? 
these background colors are yellow. So you would think any button is getting clipped. These are buttons. Why aren't they happening? It's because these background colors are different than white or black. Let me just show you that I can do this. I'm going to pull in an else statement. So if it's not black or if it's not white, the button, the only other choice is this, which is down here, which is our number two. So down here, let's just, if they click these two buttons, right? Let's say what's actually in the button text. So I'm going to come here to any button. Well, first, let's go to text to speech. I, if you look, I do not have text to speech. So we're missing something. I actually don't have any components. I, I need a couple other things, and I'll need it shortly. So I'm going to go to media. I'm going to pull in text to speech. And remember from our example, when I click on, this should make a sound. When I turn it off, it should make a sound. Here are my sound files that I gave you on the class page to download and upload. You can see here I have two sounds. This is pixel sound off, pixel sound on. I did not add that into my design, so we need to do that. I don't have text to speech. I need to do that. So let's add in two sound effects. They show up down here. So I'm going to upload this pixel on sound effect and it sounds like this so anytime we turn it black it'll play this go ahead and upload that sound pixel off s and d pixel off and I will upload that as well and it'll sound like this So just to fix those two, really easy. This is, if it's black and I'm going to white, I'm turning it off. If it's white and I'm going to black, I'm turning it on. Those two sound effects, sound effect off, play, is when I'm going to white. Sound effect on, dot play, is when I'm going from white to black. So let's see. <coughs> So really simple to do. Now down here, again I said we want to say whatever that message is, so that's why we added text to speech. Click on that. I'm going to pull that down here. And the message I want to say is whatever the text is. So remember if we come back here, this button, the text right here says to decimal. And this button, the text right here says to binary. Remember, these properties you can get as green blocks. So I don't want to just, I only have one place to put it. I'm going to go back to my any button, any component at the bottom. I want to go to any button, and I want to get the green text block. So you can see button text of component. I'm going to pull that in here. And I need the component. Which button am I clicking on? Well, again, that is the button that I clicked on. So now, that is the block for this. But it's also handling these two. When I click on to decimal, the background's not black. The background's not white. So it's going to come down here, else. And it's going to speak the text for that button. So that should say to decimal. Same thing for this. Background's not black, background's not white. It's going to come down here and it's going to speak the text for this. So let's try it. To decimal, to binary, to decimal, to binary. So there you go. This is the code to get the top half of this working. You can now make whatever you want it.
skull or whatever you want to make you can so in the next video what we will focus on is how to fix this part convert converting binary to decimal and converting decimal to binary go ahead over to the next video